Madam Chair and members, House Bill 2238 prohibits a county recorder or other officer in charge of elections from using an unmonitored ballot drop box and outlines acceptable uses of a drop box where election staff is present and monitoring the drop box. The bill also outlines requirements for use and retention of 24-hour surveillance of a drop box where it is not practical practicable for an election staff to be present. With that, I'm happy to answer any questions. Members, any questions from the staff? <laughs> Was that a question? Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Is the sponsor here? Come on up. Madam Chair, members of the committee, thank you for hearing the bill. Um, look, election integrity, quite simply stated, is the civil rights issue of our day. It's the most important issue to protecting this republic. We want it to be easy, we want it to be convenient, and we want it to be secure when casting a ballot. Those three things go hand in hand. In this last election, we saw an explosion of ballot drop boxes, in large part thanks to millions and millions of dollars that came in from left-leaning activists and big tech billionaires, uh, and that is not a secure practice. Now, one thing that we did account for is there are some rural counties that have been utilizing Dropbox mechanisms for a number of years, well beyond the 2020 election. And so we worked with both rural members as well as urban members uh, who rep you know, representing all parts of the state uh, over in the House. And we came up with a bill that we think provides maximum security and starts the process of improving security when it comes to ballot drop boxes. One, no unmonitored ballot drop boxes. You should not be able to just put a bin on the side of the road in rural Arizona and expect that that's going to be secure, right? Um, so you have to monitor it. Now this legislature has gone to great lengths over the years to put in place laws around what types of ballots can be dropped off and by whom. Those laws exist for a reason because back in the day, just a, a decade or so ago, we had a problem with ballot harvesting and ballot trafficking. When you have unmonitored drop boxes, that creates an easy opportunity for bad actors to uh, stuff ballots, to visit multiple ballot drop boxes and put ballots in each of them. It's not a secure practice. And so this bill takes a very measured step in terms of prohibiting unmonitored drop boxes, requiring staff in all possi possible op uh, uh, opportunities where it is practicable to be there and ensure compliance with the laws that this legislature has put in place. Uh, and then it also requires 24-hour video surveillance in situations where it's not practicable. Now, in a situation where it's not practicable, that would be like Yuma County. They have some very disparate population centers throughout the county, and so they will put drop boxes in areas where they don't have election staff present. Well, we shouldn't be okay with unmonitored, and so 24-hour video surveillance gives us at least the ability to adjudicate illegally cast ballots and to prosecute those who would undermine and corrupt our election process. Happy to answer any questions. Members, any questions? Okay, so, um, Mr. Hoffman, yes. if we had people who were filling out ballots and signing them and coming and bringing them into a drop box and perhaps even having a stamp, pre-stamped, do not, or, or approved and adjudicate or whatever, you know, onto the ballot image, or excuse me, the envelope, wouldn't that be one of the places that somebody, if they were involved in um, ballot harvesting, wouldn't that be one of the easiest places to inject wrong ballots? And we just had a bill die last week where we said you couldn't insert fraudulent ballots into the chain of custody. Wouldn't that be the easiest way to insert fraudulent ballots into the chain of custody is into a ballot box? Madam Chair, yes, it would be. It's especially an unmonitored drop box is the number one area where if you were trying to undermine and corrupt our election process, that would be the easiest and lowest hanging fruit to do so. We have to have monitoring and in, in, all, in all reality, we need to have staff as much as possible. And that's why we included, they need to be monitored for compliance with election laws by election staff. Because like I said, you guys, it was before I was here, 
but you all have worked for years to ensure maximum compliance, maximum uh, security in our elections. We need, in all cases possible, we need election staff there ensuring that there is compliance, right? The number one deterrent uh, for someone who would be a bad actor is a physical body, physical eyes there, because that physical person, they can call the sheriff's department if it's in a, a rural county, they can call the police if someone is abusing the process. Um, and look, again, we're not talking about people who follow the law. We're talking about people who don't follow the law, right? And so in those cases, human eyes is the best possible deterrent from illegal activity. In cases where that's simply not feasible, and there are cases across our state where it, might, where it may not be, we must have at least video surveillance so that those people can be prosecuted. Okay, thank you. And are you familiar with um, the letter that came out regarding Dr. Shiva Ayudare? I don't know how to pronounce that, Ayudare? Um, and his key points from his um, studies that he's done on this on the signatures. Are you familiar with that? I, I'm, a, I'm vaguely familiar. I actually did see you mentioned the attorney general earlier, mm -hmm. and I saw in the information he's been requesting, he takes that study very seriously. The individual is, is PhD trained, uh, MIT. I mean, this is not someone who's, you know, a fly by night operation that doesn't know how to do these studies, and it is very concerning. That's correct. So with, with your permission, if you sure. don't mind, I would like to read his points into the record um, since we're on the subject. And this is part of the subpoena as well. Dr. Shiva Ayudari's website uh, has the following points. Because we hear the argument that there's not a shred of evidence, right? right. But here you have this highly credible person, uh, highly trained uh, out of his own time and money, okay. has done these studies and has found uh, it's the first study to calculate signature matching rates and provide a quantitative framework for assessing signature verification of early voting mail ballots. Maricopa County, 1,911,918 early voting ballots were received and counted. The county reported no more than 25,000 of these ballots. 1.3% had signature mismatches, only 1.3%, and required reviewing or curing. And of those 25,000, 2.3% in post curing, 587 were confirmed signature mismatches. Interesting, the pilot study recruited three novices and three experts, uh, forensic document examiners, to calculate signature matching rates on the same sample of 499 early voting ballot envelopes. The purpose of this pilot study is to determine if the results warrant any further investigation. All six reviewers who were present um, presented images of the ballot envelopes to evaluate if the signatures on those envelopes matched with genuine signatures on file uh, concurred. 60 of the 499, which is 12 percent, um, as signature mismatches. So not two, but 12 percent. Based on that study, uh, if you extrapolate that over 204,430 um, should have been cured versus the 25,000 that the county disallowed. Um, though this pilot study is compelling on its own, an expanded study is warranted. Mm -hmm. So here you have um, someone who has looked at the signatures on the envelopes compared with the mortgage, you know, the documentation uh, that's publicly available, and they were obvious mismatches. So the question is, how does that happen? Why weren't they cured? And there, there's a lot of uh, unanswered questions that the Attorney General would need to be able to answer but cannot because of the obstruction coming from the Board of Supervisors here in Maricopa County. So uh, with, with that, what is your reaction to that? And uh, do you think that this, your bill will help curtail ballot harvesting using fake signatures? Yeah, Madam Chair, members of the committee, uh, I appreciate you, you reading that into the record because it is, it's incredibly important information from a source that this is not a, a, a Republican source. This is someone who is a trained expert um, and it is highly concerning. And that's why I think it's important that one of the first steps that we all take as we come out of this process, as we come out of not only the 2020 election, but seeing the perversion of the process with private funding, I mean, almost half a billion dollars injected by big tech billionaires, it is important that we secure one of the most vulnerable areas of the election process, which are these ballot drop boxes. Um, I would also just add uh, to, to the commentary that you made. Uh, in 2019, the New York Post published an op-ed 
from a Democratic operative in New Jersey that their entire job during elections was to go door to door to individuals who don't speak English well and to older uh, voters and get them to hand him their ballots so that he could then go complete the ballots and turn them in on behalf of the Democratic Party. That's a highly concerning trend, and it shows that there is a mechanism, there is a process for how this is done, and it's a weaponized process that is very well organized. And this was a union official uh, working on behalf of the Democrats. And so I think, again, we have to secure this, this most vulnerable area of our elections process. Thank you, Representative Hoffman, and I, I agree with you, and I find it interesting that just um, two, four years ago, um, Senator Borelli uh, is the one that pulls up the, uh, the arguments coming from the Democrat side uh, that they want it to be secure because they're concerned about it, and and now it's the, the most secure election in all history. You know, so it, it, it's, we ha we have... We have some work to do. I think both sides are equally concerned. I wish we were all equally concerned at the same time so that we could fix this. Well, Ma Madam Chair, certainly amongst the voters, I think both sides are equally as concerned. When we did the polling for the Universal Voter ID Act that's now going to be on the ballot in November, uh, it was overwhelming. 68% of Democrats cared about election security, 86% uh, of Republicans, 78% of independents. And that wasn't just across party lines like that. That was also across all race elements, right? Mm -hmm. It was African Americans and Hispanic Americans and Asian Americans, male, female. They all agree. So again, I think amongst the average person, I think we are in the same spot. Like I started with, we want our elections to be easy, convenient, and secure. Those three things are not mutually exclusive. They go hand in hand. And this bill, I think, furthers that effort. And just one last comment to the point that you were making is you're right. Just a few years ago in 2015, it was people like then Senator Kamala Harris, Senator Amy Klobuchar, Senator Elizabeth Warren, who were the loudest advocates uh, uh, for election security. And in fact, it was a, a Democrat Hillary Clinton uh, funded and backed group uh, that was the one putting out, they put out a 50 page memo to all of the Democratic members of Congress and of the Senate, uh, and then obviously to their base, calling for election security and election integrity as one of the most important issues that had to be addressed moving forward. And so I find it interesting that now there is, you know, this apparent sunlight between uh, uh, Republicans and Democrats when it should be an issue that we all agree and, and, and all care about equally. Thank you. Any final questions, comments for the sponsor? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Vice Chair. Yes, uh, requesting to speak is Jen Marson. You have five seconds. No, just kidding. <laughs> you heard me blow through one testimony really fast a couple weeks ago. No, 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 not that fast, but you got a million, minute and a half. Thank Understood, you. sir. Uh, Madam Chair, members, for the record, Jen Marson with the Arizona Association of Counties. We are opposed to the bill at this time. Uh, while we recognize the camera amendment, we appreciate that in the House. There are places without power, so we do have to recognize that. I think we heard the sponsor talk about, you know, the rural component. That is a component of being rural as well. We do have a question about the four-year retention. Federal Federal law requires us to hold things for 22 months. Arizona law requires us to do it for 24. So we're just a little confused about the four years. And then I do want to mention the voter van. That's a very... Um popular in Pinal County. Um, this is a van where people can register to vote, where people can vote. If a polling place goes down for some reason, it can be used to substitute for that polling place on election day. There is a piece of this bill that prohibits a voter from voting from any kind of vehicle, and we believe that would prohibit um, the voter van, so we want to look at that issue as well. In addition, while it does talk about you can still vote from a vehicle if you're ADA. We're not allowed to ask people what their disability is, so I'm not sure how we comply with the intent of the legislation and the ADA. With that, I'm happy to answer any questions. Members, any questions? Thank you. Thank you. I do. Oh, go ahead. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair and uh, Ms. Marson. Uh, what's more important, accuracy? <laughs> hmm. Madam Chair, Senator Borelli, that's a tough one. Accuracy, I think more important secure madam chair that's fine is it security the utmost concern shouldn't it be madam chair senator borelli i think security and accuracy are 100 percent tied thank you you're welcome thank you mm -hmm. who else do we have 
Next. Oh, uh, Jessica Jenick. Jessica Jenick. Jody Liggett. Please state your name for the record, ma'am. And you got a minute and a half. Destroy the room first when I come up here. Uh, Madam Chairman, members of the committee, my name is Jody Liggett. I speak in respectful opposition to the bill on behalf of the League of Women Voters. We oppose 2238. Drop boxes offer safe, convenient options for early voters at secure locations chosen by county recorders and approved by county supervisors. We think this system is working. While this bill has been improved to allow unmonitored boxes with video surveillance, this improvement will mean little without sufficient funding and resources to maintain or expand ballot box access in the future. Um, withdrawing the option to deliver a ballot via Dropbox will hurt countless voters, particularly those who vote on, who rely on them for accessibility. You've heard about a number of dif different groups who will be disadvantaged. Um, just one small example, voters in the village of Oak Creek used to be able to drive 20 miles round trip to Sedona, 40 minutes, or 40 miles round trip, 60 minutes to Cottonwood, until a drop box was installed in Oak Creek in 2020. This greatly improved convenience for those voters. The elimination of drop boxes would add unreasonable burden, forcing voters to drive long distances to deliver their ballots. Thank you for your time. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Any questions? Thank you. Thanks. Okay, one last call for Jessica Jenick. Okay, we're going with Carol Rogela. Carol Rogela, R-O-G-L-A. Philip Haley. Cynthia Sampson. Philip's coming on up. Oh, sound off if I called your name. <laughs> Please state your name for the record, sir. You have a minute and a half. My name is Philip Haley, I'm a resident of Yuma. Uh, recently moved from the state of Washington here for um, many reasons. I've got to cut things short here. Um, voter security is the most important thing. If we don't have a secure vote and a reliable method of counting, then, you know, we're done. We, we do not have a republic, a democracy, or any other functional, uh, functioning form of government. Um, when I was about four or five years old, my mother uh, and I walked to a polling place in our neighborhood uh, in Yakima, Washington. It was just in a neighbor's home. They had those big mechanical uh, machines with the draw curtain and the thing there. And she asked the poll worker if I could go in behind the curtain with her. And after a short consideration, that was denied because the rule said one person in the booth. Now a baby in arms might have been an exception. So, um, long story short, 20 seconds. We wanted to pull, we wanted to pull that curtain back after the last election because there's so many anomalies. And once we pulled the curtain back, if people were honest and looked at the evidence, they would find a cesspool that we fell into. And that needs to change. Read a book called Vote Scam. Some guys, liberal guys in the 70s, uh, were denied um, uh, justice in their vote campaign because. Let's finish your thought, please. The League of Women Voters, for one, were cheating for the other side, as well as the media in, okay. in Miami. Now, read the book. I challenge everyone to read the book, Boat Scam. It's a true story. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Comments? Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Madam Chair, uh, Cynthia, Cynthia Sampson? Nope. Okay. Madam Chair, please fill out a slip. Approved. Yep. Come on up. Thank and. You. Uh, Veronica Corcoran, I am speaking on behalf of me, I guess. Thank you. Um, I just would like to say God gave dominion to people to control our land, not dominion corporations. Big difference, okay? So if we are here to question the voting integrity, 
the League of Women, whoever it is questioning, I'm questioning them. What are you afraid of? What are you hiding? Because I know if we have one day, one paper, one vote, I want this paper to be secure, just like money, okay, please. Nothing that can be printed in different locations, no machines. Please, let's do the simple one precinct. Let's come back to basic because God is giving us grace in this country. I'm Ukrainian originally, I don't want to go off topic, but I will tell you, the media is lying about what's happening in the world. Stay on that. And I will stay here because this vote will determine. My vote was stolen, I'm pretty sure, because I know how my friends feel and I walk on the streets and I see people telling me the stories of their votes being stolen. In fact, I, I can personal story, but I cannot go into this. I just want to say, uh, this is a country that will save humanity. We are human beings. You need to decide. You're with people or you're with bear, banking corporations who are controlling this dominion system. Decide. You're either with criminals or you're either with us because God will judge you. In every human DNA, there is a, a print. It says Yahweh. Read it, okay? They want to change us who we are as humans. Please, we need to stand for our vote because we are sacred. Each of us is sacred. Please, I beg you, stand with us. Thank you, Veronica. Thank you. Okay, who else? Madam Chair, that's all. There's in. Just sign up to speak. Okay, are there any final discussions, questions? Okay, seeing none, go Madam ahead and... Chair, yes, final comment? comment? Yes, thank you. For sure. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just want to hit on two things that were brought up uh, during testimony. So one was that 24-hour video surveillance would be an issue because of lack of electricity. I'd like to point out that Yuma County has been doing this for years for many election cycles. They have 24-hour video surveillance on 100% of their drop boxes. Uh, and so I think if Yuma County can do it, our other counties can as well. It was also brought up that lack of funding uh, was an issue here. Remember, I also have on your agenda today the Election Integrity Fund. It was designed and written specifically to allow counties to access it to cover needs that they can't cover when it comes to securing our elections. So that, too, should not be a barrier to passing this bill. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's move the bill. May, excuse me, Chair. May I ask a question? Yes. Sorry. Of the sponsor. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, Representative Hoffman. Thank you very much for your sponsoring of this bill. Um, my question is, um, the ballots, um, based on what you talked about earlier, are you saying that some of these ballots that were um, stuffed or replicated is there a significant difference between a ballot and what was copied? Because usually ballots have a different type of paper and they're usually longer. And when you drop it into the, um, the machine, it, there's a code that it go, it, when you feed it into the machine. So are you saying that those were replicated and counted? So, Madam Chair, Go Senator, ahead. thank you for the question. Um, I appreciate you, you bringing this up. So I think Senator Borelli can probably talk with you more offline about the types of papers that were used in the election and what was found in terms of the audit. That's not uh, really what my bill is designed to address. But what I would say in response is that if you have unmonitored ballot drop boxes, so just a drop box out on the corner of the street or out on the side of a rural road uh, that has no monitoring whatsoever, you don't really know. You don't know what's being put in that shouldn't have been put in because there's there's simply no monitoring of it, and that's we actually took into account um, you know our our uh, tribal lands when it came to uh, crafting this bill. We recognize that sometimes again we want it easy, convenient, and secure, and sometimes a ballot drop box uh, may be needed out there, uh, but it needs to be monitored, right? Because you simply can't have any level of chain of custody. I mean, it disappears, right, if there's an unmonitored drop box where anyone can put anything and any number of ballots into. Any number of ballots. Chair, I'm sorry, Chair. Um, when you say any number of ballots, the only thing that I can conclude for your reasoning of sponsoring this bill is that 
that there are replication of ballots. Otherwise, everyone gets one ballot that is valid and is counted. So my, my line of questioning is you're talking about stuffing these ballots. You're talking about people putting a number of ballots into these boxes. That's your reason to sponsor this bill. That's why I'm asking. I, I think um, my question isn't to my colleague up here. I'm questioning you. So, Madam Chair, Senator, um, again, thank you for the question. Let me I'll be a little bit more clear for you. So this legislature, I'm sure you're aware, but this legislature put in place laws regarding how many ballots an individual can turn in. They must revive, reside at the residence of the individual, right? Essentially, it's designed, the law as it's currently in place is designed so that only a family, mem family member can go and drop off their ballots, right? And it's a convenience thing, okay? Because if you're the, the mom or the dad uh, and you want to take, you know, your husband's ballot or your wife's ballot, um, that, that should be fine, right? Because, you, you, look, you're in the same family, you're in the same house, okay? But the idea here, and if you go back to the New York Post uh, article that I was telling you about earlier, the idea here is that that law was put in place because there was a problem with people harvesting ballots. So again, going and taking advantage of exploiting people who don't speak English well uh, and maybe don't really know uh, what, what, was, you know, what, was, what they were being asked to do or at least asked to give up. Right? I mean, your right to cast a ballot is a sacred right that we enjoy here in this country. And there were people that were exploiting uh, individuals in our communities and then taking those ballots, filling them out for someone that maybe didn't align with the individual's actual voter preferences, and then putting them, uh, you know, and then turning them in. Okay? Ballot drop boxes make the ability for bad actors to engage in that type of nefarious and illicit behavior so much easier. And so that's why, look, we're not saying that you can't have any ballot drop box ever, okay? That would be, we're, 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 what we're saying is that you have to monitor those drop boxes to ensure compliance with the law and to ensure that there's a, a, a level of security around that sacred right to cast a ballot. And, and, and Representative Hoffman, I'll just finish this conversation because it isn't specific to the bill, but even still, even if not one person ever put a bad ballot into the drop box, the fact that it could happen right. diminishes voter confidence. Right. And we want voter confidence to be restored That's because right. we do know that voter confidence at the moment is at a, probably an all-time low, I yes. would guess. Yes. Um, and I and think it's pretty num safe. And the numbers yeah. back that up, Madam Chair. Yeah, so I think that anything we can do, it, we're not making this more difficult. Right. We are just securing it. That's right. And there's still going to be the drop box. You can still go in and drop your ballot in, and there will be oversight, which is prudent. That's I don't. Right. I can't understand an argument to say we shouldn't have prudent oversight of something like a ballot drop box. That's right. I don't understand that. That's right. So Sage, Sage points. I think, Ma Madam Chair. Yes, go ahead. As long as it's not uh, the same thing over and over, because we have to keep going. But go ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair um, and Representative Hoffman. Um, I'm, I'm wondering um, the the surveillance is you know how is that going to be archived and is there money for counties in your bill to to be able to do all that this bill is is requesting? So, Ma Madam Chair, Senator, thank you for the question. Um, look, I, I don't need to micromanage the process. If you notice, we don't require that the video surveillance be uh, uplinked, right, like a live feed to the county recorder's office. So it could be archived in terms of, uh, you know, on-device storage. It could be archived in terms of aggregated onto, uh, you know, multi-terabyte hard drives. Um, it could be stored securely in an online vault, right, uploaded to an online vault. Uh, and, and secured that way. So I'm not trying to micromanage uh, exactly how the recorders have to comply because I think there are some really good recorders that exist in our state, right? And they may come up with a really innovative way to do that, and I'm okay with that, right? But we do need to set at least a base level standard that all counties need to abide by. When it comes to funding, like I said, there's not funding in this specific bill, because I'm, I'm sure as you're aware, uh, when you have bills that have money attached, they become budget uh, negotiation, negotiation items. Um, we don't want to negotiate with election integrity, right? We want election integrity to pass on its merits and to get signed into law on its merits by the governor uh, so that our voters, as Ms. Townsend mentioned, can have confidence 
in not only the process, but the outcome of our elections. And so uh, there is another bill, though, you'll hear today that provides funding for election security. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, let's move the bill. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. I move the House Bill 2238 receive due pass recommendation. Seeing no further discussion, please call the roll. Senator Gonzalez. Madam Chair, I'd like to explain my vote. Please do. Thank you. Um, as was, uh, as we heard in testimony, um, drop boxes are important to voters. They depend on them. They per, they provide a convenience way from for them to vote, especially in rural areas. Um, and there um, is no funding for this to happen. Um, there's um, and therefore I vote no. Senator Hathathley. Please. My vote. Thank you. <clears throat> yes, uh, before you do, I just want to remind the audience, please do not give feedback verbally uh, on the votes. Okay, go ahead. I just want to state that um, there was a uh, made mention of drop boxes on the reservation. I, that's where I'm from, and we do have a drop box in Tuba City and it's located in a county building, inside a county building, and we only have access from eight to five, not 12 to one, and when we drop off our votes uh, or our ballots, it's usually done, it's always done when somebody is present. So, um, and I am on the permanent early vote list. I just wanna make that known. And um, all the way around the board, I think that I do support um, the integrity of a vote. However, this bill that's being sponsored, I don't see an appropriation in place. And I think that 24-hour uh, surveillance, uh, I think that maybe uh, making sure that these boxes are within a county or a government office that's open from eight to five will only add to the security level. So with that, I vote no. Senator Mesnard? Aye. Senator Quesada? Uh, yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. I'd like to explain my vote. Next one, my yes, vote. Yeah, thank please. you, Madam Chair. Um, I, my, my, my problem with this bill is I think what we heard the sponsor say it at the very beginning. What, what the real problem is here. He said that Democrats are voting. Uh, that, and, and thank you for being clear about that. That's the problem you're trying to solve. And, um, and, and, and I, that's, I, that's impugning motive, and I'm gonna ask you to, to not do that. Well, uh, Ma Madam Chair, I'm gonna quote exactly what the, what the sponsor said. Um, and so uh, that, it, it's, it's obvious what the problem is that he's trying to solve here. Um, but here's once the again, thing. I'm going here's to say thing, that, Madam Madam excuse I'm me, no, 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 no. I'm calling order. I did not hear him say that, and you're continuing to press, and you are impugning his motives, which is not allowed in my committee. So I'm going to ask you to refrain from making an accusation that the reason he's doing this is because of Democrats voting. So you can you can discuss anything else, but you're not going to assign motive to the sponsor. Okay, M Madam Chair, I, I could care less what the motive is from the sponsor here, but let's talk about the impact of this bill, because that's what matters. And the impact here is that this, isn't, this is certainly going to hurt Democratic voters, certainly. But it's also going to hurt Republican voters. And it's going to hurt all voters. Uh, and and that's, that's the issue here, is that um, in, whether there's an effort to hurt one group of voters or not is irrelevant. The, the reality is it's going to hurt all voters. And, and that's a problem. Um, and and here's, the, here's the difference. No, no matter how much I disagree with Republican voters, I don't believe that any Republican voter's voice should be silenced because of an unnecessary, unnecessary obstacle. Uh, and uh, I, I, I also want to take um, issue with uh, the narrative that, that people who don't speak English are being exploited uh, in this process. Um, that, that's offensive you guys, on a number of different levels. Um, and I, would like, I, I really would like to know that, you know, who the hell are you to presume what me and my community understand or don't understand about voting? We know exactly what we are doing when we are voting, and this is how we vote. We vote together as a community because we care about each other as a community. Uh, and Democrats certainly care about security, reliability, privacy, accountability when it comes to elections. Um, and you, you met, the sponsor mentioned uh, several high-profile uh, individuals who care about that. Um, but what we are not in favor of 
is unnecessary barriers in front of an ability to cast a vote. That's what we're not in favor of. And we're not willing to trade one for the other. So this, this process doesn't make anything any easier. This doesn't bring more security, doesn't bring more reliability. Uh, it, what it does do is it, is it subjects some voters to an obstacle course, and it says only if you can get past that obstacle course can your vote be counted. And you're taking the away of, when you do that, when you make voting more difficult like that, what you're actually doing is you're taking away the ability of your constituents to hold you accountable. And that's a shame. Uh, and, and, and I don't think any of us should be acting in fear in that way. We should be instead proposing platforms that are actually going to win voters over uh, rather than uh, preventing who votes. Uh, this does the opposite, so I vote no. Senator Rogers? Um, Senator Rogers, before you go, I just want to... Um, this is the sign of approval, not, not the snapping stuff, because that makes noise. It's distracting. Sorry, I know it's like nitpicking and micromanaging, but I just have to do that to keep this committee going smoothly. So this is yes, happy. I don't know what you do if you don't like it. Just don't show it to me. So, Okay, go ahead. Madam Chair, may I explain my vote? Yes, please. Drop boxes are unmonitored. They corrupt the integrity of our elections. They open our state of Arizona up to ballot harvesting. I represent a rural district also, and my constituents want me here to support them. And uh, as I say, this opens our state up to ballot harvesting and really other shenanigans. I hope this clears the floor of the Arizona State Senate. And with that, I vote aye. Senator Rogers? It is aye, Senator Rogers. Oh, sorry, Senator Brelli? <laughs> Get this gal some iced tea or something, Get some caffeine. <laughs> Madam Chair, may I explain my vote? Please do. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm really glad that Tuba City is more secure than Maricopa County because, you know, the Federal Elections Commission actually comes up with a protocol for chain of custody of the ballots. Um, and, of course, there's naturally uh, requirements. So they, each county has to come up with a, a chain of custody protocol. Maricopa County did come up with a chain of custody protocol for drop boxes, uh, early, early voting uh, ballot transport statements, where they list down the, lo the location, the boxes have a serial number on it. Of course, when it's, it's broken, they put a new serial number on it. Um, and of course, the location staff member signs off on that. And then when they're transported, they have to have two people to transport the contents. And that's supposed to also have two signatures on it. And then when it gets to the county, somebody's, the receiving agent is supposed to sign it and date it. And then they're supposed to log down the serial numbers and make sure that they comply and they're right. And of course, then they're supposed to put a ballot, a count of all the ballots in the transport bin. And then of course, that auditing agent signs it and dates it. There is a protocol. However, when the protocol is not followed, then we have a problem. And here's one of the problems. It's also a violation of state law. Uh, ARS in Title 16, elections, election, uh, elections and electors, additional violations. An officer of an election who knowingly fails or refuses to perform any duty required of him under this chapter is a class two misdemeanor unless another classification is specified uh, in this chapter. So with that said, Months ago, through a freedom of information request of getting these documents from the county, uh, it was like 1,900, a little over, but 1,903 files, you know, was pieces of paper just like this this year. Um, only. 386 were actually followed the law. Now, the county has said that they had collected 923,000 ballots through early voting from drop boxes. 
But when you go through the 1900 files that was done in the Freedom of Information request, uh, that count, that ballot count is 189,167, which is the deficit of 733,833 ballots that are technically unaccounted for. That's a 79.5%. That means 75.9% of the 1,900 transport documents have zero or blank, meaning most of them don't even have a zero in the count. It's just blank, which goes right back down to how do they account for over 733,000 ballots from drop boxes throughout Maricopa County? I'm not making these numbers up. This is from documentation that came from Maricopa County. And by the way, the Attorney General has that doc documentation. So to say that this was the most secure election and drop boxes, there's nothing wrong with them, is a myth. Is a myth. We come up with a system to make sure that everything is done right. We've, come on, we put locks on doors to keep honest people honest. We have video footage from Yuma of the same individual making multiple trips to drop boxes in the middle of the night and stuffing them into a, into a drop box. Even here in Maricopa County, 3 a.m., unsupervised drop boxes on video, somebody showing up with two backpacks just stuffing stuff in there. We don't know what it is. He could be shoving pizzas in there. We don't know. But to have no surveillance on that without these things being in a secure location, not only that, for God's, they didn't even follow a chain of custody. I'm so glad that Tuba City's got secure, secure locations for these drop boxes. It's a shame that Maricopa County doesn't. As far as cost go, I'm tired of hearing that number or hearing that, that statement about cost. How much does it cost? How about the American blood and treasure that's been spent and spilled for spreading freedom throughout the world? That's a cost enough. I didn't want to go there, but you know, I'm tired of hearing this garbage about this is a myth, this is a fraud, this is the big lie. The big lie that this was the, the biggest lie was this was not, this was a secure election in Maricopa County. And I'm really glad, Madam, Pre Madam Chair, that you are actually going to subpoena the Maricopa County supervisors. They need, and their elected people need to come here and answer on why they are continuing to obstruct an investigation that's set forth by the state Senate. And of course, hopefully it's a criminal investigation that the Attorney General will pursue. That, Madam Chair, I vote aye. Senator Townsend. Thank you, by way of explaining my vote, uh, two-part explanation. Um, we heard today that um, the sponsor of this bill said it in his own words that he was here uh, proposing this language because Democrats vote. And I, I'm just astonished. We, we all heard his testimony. Raise your hand if you heard him say his motive was because Democrats are voting, we need to run this bill. No one heard that. I am tired of being impugned. I am tired of them assigning our motives and saying this is wise because we're trying, we need to cheat in order to win elections. We need to suppress the Democrat vote in order to win elections. I am tired of being accused of that. He did not say that. He did not say that. So to claim that he did is a soundbite. It's a Twitter post. It's a claim and it, it holds zero substance, but it'll be out there. It's probably already on Twitter. It's probably already out there. I'm tired of it. We are here to suppress the cheaters, not the voters. Simple. If you don't like that, then we have something to talk about. I want to talk to you about why you don't like that. So I want the record to reflect that that accusation on this dais was out of line, it was untrue, and all around this state needs to stop. And we need to work together to secure our elections and restore confidence, plain and simple. We're not trying to suppress anybody. We are trying to increase confidence. And then second, it was brought up about the subpoena. I shouldn't have to issue a subpoena. I shouldn't have to. We shouldn't have to um, do these types of bills. The hours that all of you and all of us have spent trying to come up with ways to secure elections 
only to have it just <laughs> evaporate because I uh, you know, can't say why. You have to ask the people who vote no on these things. All this time and effort we've put into this, um, the, the idea is to create a good election. And when we have things like what he just presented, chain of custody forms not filled out, chain of custody forms not signed, the numbers blank, no way to know were there extra ballots in there? How many were in there? No way to know. And no oversight. Who's going to be held accountable? Who's going to do the holding people accountable? Who? Because I haven't seen anything yet. I haven't seen anything yet. I am sorry to all of you who've worked so hard only to have these bills die, only to have these bills die as they make their way off to the Senate floor. And with little hope that the, these illegally filled out forms, that the people who did it will be held accountable. It's very frustrating, but we're not gonna give up. We're going to keep trying. We owe it to you and to our posterity, don't we? So we're gonna keep going. And with that, I vote aye. Four eyes, three nays. Four eyes, three nays. You have passed House Bill 2238. Thank you, Representative Hoffman.